Mike Waltz is a congressman from the great state of Florida who sits on the House Armed Services Committee and a former soldier. Okay, Congressman, I guess people are wondering why. Why would the U.S. sit down with Iran and negotiate a deal with a country that wants to kill the last group that sat down and negotiated with them? Yeah, Trey, let's just look real quick. Where were we at the end of the Trump uh, administration? The Iranian economy was crippled. The maximum pressure campaign was in place. Soleimani, their field general, was dead. Deterrence was restored. And they were the, on the verge of coming back to the table uh, for any kind of deal out of a position of weakness. Now, to your point, uh, they're threatening and trying to assassinate U.S. officials. They're holding Americans hostage right now as we speak. And just last week, Trey, they actually wounded U.S. soldiers in Syria in an attack on one of our bases. But why are they doing all of this? You know why? Because they know they can get away with it. They know this administration's so desperate for any deal of any kind. They're totally wedded to this policy. And the Ayatollahs smell weakness uh, in this White House. All right. I want to come back to that. But but speaking of countries that are not weak and sometimes take matters into their own hands, Israel has made it clear they are not bound by this agreement and they're going to do what they need to do to protect themselves. So where do you think the United States will land if Israel decides, look, close is too close when it comes to Iran and a nuclear weapon and we're not going to allow it? Yeah, the Israeli prime minister uh, is, is saying publicly that the only way he believes and that Israeli intelligence believes the Iranians will not uh, get a fully operational nuke is if they believe that we in Israel will take it out. That if we put the credible threat of military force on the table, look, nobody wants any kind of war in the Middle East, but if Iran gets a nuke, the entire Middle East will explode in a nuclear arms race. And the only thing the Ayatollahs will respect at this point is strength. And, and if they believe that we will support Israel in taking it out, but instead the administration is looking at a deal that will unleash $7 billion uh, from South Korea and other places to flow into the regime that will allow them to sell 50 million barrels of oil. That'll make them even more flush with cash. And then on top of that, uh, we're about to lift sanctions on the Ayatollah himself, his inner circle, all of their banks and their entire energy industry. This regime will be flush with cash and that cash will go right to Moscow to buy weapons and out to their terrorists uh, to attack Israel, to attack us and to attack the entire Middle East trade. This is I mean, this is even worse than the last 2015 Iran deal. The, the only, and, the, and the worst thing about it is the whole thing set to sunset in 2023 and 2025. So we're going to give them all of those billions and the deal will still expire according to the last agreement. You know, the only only saving grace I think we have are the Israelis to convince this administration. And, oh, by the way, it does have to come to Congress. And I hope a couple of Democrats will wake up, uh, get some common sense and work with us uh, to tank this awful deal. All right. This is called an agreement uh, and it's not a treaty, which means the Senate does not have to approve or ratify this. Can you help? I think I know the answer. But for folks that did not serve in Congress that are wondering, how can the how can the Biden administration do this without consent of the Senate? Well, in my view and in many people's view, they should be doing it with consent of the Senate because it is binding uh, the United States uh, in, in what is essentially a treaty. They're just calling it something different. But after they did this in 2015 under the Obama administration, Congress passed the Iran Nuclear Agreement Review Act, call, uh, commonly called INARA, which says, you know what, Congress has got to approve this. Uh, and, and if the administration does not send this deal agreement uh, you know, quasi treaty, whatever they want to call it, back to Congress, they will be in violation of the law. Uh, and, and we absolutely have to hold them accountable. Is it your understanding that the Biden administration will abide by that that law or will they challenge that under some separation of powers argument? Well, their lead negotiator has said publicly that they are going to send it in Congress in accordance with INARA. But you have a lot of chirping voices in the administration and in Congress saying, no, this is just a return 
to the 2015 deal, which was in place before this law was enacted, and therefore you don't need to. So it wouldn't surprise me at all, Trey. I don't trust, even if it's a horrible deal, the Iranians know it, uh, and that's why they're taking their lunch money all day long. And by the way, they're not, we're not even negotiating with the Iranians. We're negotiating through the Russians, of all people, because the Iranians won't even bother to talk to us. So another part of the agreement is the Russians get to decide who's in compliance, hold the Iranians' uh, um, uh, you know, fissile material, and then if the Russians decide that a future administration isn't in compliance, like if President Trump or another Republican comes in, they can release it back to the Iranians. Uh, that's tying a future administration's hands. It's unconstitutional and it's wrong. I know you're watching it and I look forward to having you back. If there are any updates, thank you for your service to our country in uniform also, Congressman. All right. Thank you, Trey. Coming up, the reality and perception of crime. Senior citizens are afraid to leave home. People